So tomorrow it is going to be July 1st, which to us Canadians is known as Canada Day, but to NHL fans across the world, it is known as the start of NHL free agency. So I wanted to take a look at who I think will be the top 5 free agent goalies for this upcoming summer. So coming in at number 1 on this list, we have the two-time Vesna Trophy winner, Sergei Bobrovsky from the Columbus Blue Jackets. Last season in 62 games played with the Jackets, Bobrovsky put up 37 wins, 9 shutouts, a 2.58 goals against average, and a .913 save percentage. And in 10 playoff games, Bobrovsky went 6-4 with no shutouts, 2.41 goals against average, and a .925 save percentage, and was a big reason why the Blue Jackets swept the Tampa Bay Lightning in the first round of the Stanley Cup playoffs. He is 30 years old, so he is nearing the end of his prime, but I still think he has 3 or 4 years left of solid hockey in him. His previous cap hit was $7.425 million per season, so I think in free agency he'll definitely get a bit of a raise from that up to about $9 million. Three potential teams I could see Borowski signing with are the Florida Panthers, Calgary Flames, and the Carolina Hurricanes. Florida needs that elite starting goalie that is able to push them into the playoffs, and I think Borowski can definitely be that on Florida. Plus, they have a lot of cap space, so they could definitely offer Borowski a lot of money. Calgary is kind of in the same position as Florida, that they need a goaltender, and Bobrovsky could also thrive behind Calgary's strong defense. And if Calgary does not re-sign Mike Smith, that opens up some cap space and a roster spot for Bobrovsky to play in Calgary. Carolina is fresh off an Eastern Conference Finals appearance where they got swept by the Bruins, and it's looking like McElhinney and Mrazek will both leave the Hurricanes for free agency. So Bobrovsky could definitely come in and be their number one goalie and keep Carolina a contender for years to come. For number two, I have this past year's Vesna Trophy finalist, Robin Leonard from the New York Islanders. So last season, in 46 games played with the Islanders, Leonard went 25-13-5 with 6 shutouts, a 2.13 goals against average, and a .930 save percentage. He helped lead the Islanders back to the playoffs, and in the playoffs where he played 8 games, he went 4-4 four four with no shutouts, a 2 goals against average, and a .936 save percentage. I actually originally did not have Robin Leonard on my list due to the fact that I thought he was going to re-sign with the Islanders, but recent news has come out and it sounds like that he's far away from re-signing with the Islanders due to the amount of money he wants versus what the Islanders are offering to him. Last year, Leonard was able to really turn his game around and became a really good goaltender, which is why I put him at the number two spot on my list. Some teams I could see Robin Leonard signing with are the Panthers, Blue Jackets, and Hurricanes. For the Panthers, if Bobrovsky does not end up signing with them, I think Robin Leonard would definitely be a very good second option for them. And last season, he proved he could be a number one goalie in this league, which is exactly what the Panthers need. For the Blue Jackets, I think Leonard could definitely help replace Bobrovsky and would be a big piece to keeping the Blue Jackets a playoff contender. With Leonard and Carolina, I think the Hurricanes could still have a good goalie even if McElhinney and Mrazek both leave for free agency. For number 3, I have Simon Verlamo from the Colorado Avalanche. Last season in 49 games played with Colorado, Varlamov went 20-19-9 with two shutouts, a 2.87 goals against average, and a .909 save percentage. He lost the starting job to Philip Grubauer though and played no games in the 2019 playoffs in Colorado's playoff run. Now some of you may be asking why I put Varlamov over Peter Mrazek and that is because I think Varlamov has a lot more experience than Mrazek as a starting goalie. Varlamov was Colorado's starting goalie for multiple years before this year when Grubauer came in, and he had some great seasons including the 13-14 campaign. Meanwhile, Mrazek has never really had an opportunity to be a full-time starting goalie. Some potential fits I could see for Varlamov are the Blue Jackets, Oilers, and Hurricanes. I think the Blue Jackets could definitely use Varlamov if Bobrovsky leaves Columbus because he could definitely fill a starting role there. And the Oilers need goaltending help really badly and I think they have the cap space available to sign Varlamov. And the Hurricanes because I think Varlamov could definitely be used there, especially if McElhinney and Mrazek both leave for free agency. I just wanted to make a quick note that I also think Varlamov could go to the Islanders, but at the time that I made these pictures, it looked like Leonard was likely going to re-sign with them, but now that's one day before free agency, it's looking like Leonard will leave the Islanders. At the number 4 spot, we have Peter Mrazek from the Carolina Hurricanes. In 40 games played with the Hurricanes last season, Mrazek went 23, 14, and 3 with 4 shutouts, a 2.39 goals against average, 
and a .914 save percentage. In 11 playoff games with the Hurricanes, Mrazek had 5 wins, 5 losses, 2 shutouts, 2.73 goals against average, and a .894 save percentage. Based off his stats, his play definitely declined from the regular season to the playoffs. Some potential fits I could see for Mrazek are the Blue Jackets, Flames, and Avalanche. On the Blue Jackets, Peter Mrazek would likely split starts with Jonas Corposalo. The same could be said for the Flames and David Riddick and the Avalanche and Philip Grubauer, but putting Mrazek in a timeshare would definitely put him into a position to succeed. Mrazek might also be a good fit on the New York Islanders and be able to split starts with Thomas Grice. At the last spot on my list, I have Mike Smith from the Calgary Flames. This veteran goalie played 42 games for the Flames last year, where he kind of struggled with 23 wins, 16 losses, 2 overtime losses, 2 shutouts, 2.73 goals against average, and at .898 save percentage. Smith lost the starting job at the beginning of the year last year to Riddick, but got it back just in time for the playoffs, where he played in all of Calgary's playoff games, going 1-4 with one shutout, having a 3.2 goals against average and a .917 save percentage. Even though he struggled a bit last season, I put Mike Smith at number 5 on my list because he is that veteran experience that a team could desperately use. I think with the next team Smith signs with, he's more suited to be a backup goalie than a starter, but he has that experience where if your starter gets injured, he is able to come in and play well for your team. Some potential fits for Smith would be Chicago, Colorado, and Edmonton. In Chicago, Corey Crawford has been struggling with a lot of injuries recently, so Smith could be a cushion for them. For the Avalanche, Philip Grubauer is probably going to be the starting goalie for them, but Smith could definitely challenge him. In Edmonton, Smith would likely split starts with Miko Koskinen, but he could steal the number one job due to Edmonton's weak goaltending depth. So that concludes my video on my top 5 free agent goalies of 2019, I hope everyone enjoyed, and I just wanted to note that all the stats used in this video were from NHL.com, and I'll be pumping out some more videos in the near future.